Hey guys, my name is Judy Cho and I'm board certified in holistic nutrition and I have a private functional medicine practice where we have worked with over 2000 carnivore patients, get closer to root cause healing. And we often start with the carnivore cures, all meat elimination diet. I think if you understand a little bit more of why everything's going on, then you can question when people are telling you that supplementing iodine is harmful for your thyroid. I would just question that a little bit. So if you look here, obviously nearly every cell fluid tissue in our body contains iodine due to its role in thyroid hormone synthesis. So while iodine is not required for every single cell's primary function, the presence of iodine supports a range of protective and regulatory functions. So iodine is essential to sustain life. It's also in the thyroid glands, but it's also in the tissues of salivary, breast, uterus, ovaries, prostate, stomach, nasal, gut, bone, and extracellular fluids and connective tissue of almost every single organ. And although it is easily absorbed in the intestines as any other essential nutrient in the form of iodine, we need iodine or we would die. Lastly, overdosing iodine is nearly impossible and fear mongering studies were done with radioactive iodine. So radioactive iodine is not the same as potassium iodide and iodine. The logical side of my brain always thinks about, well, what's the rate of thyroid disorders? And if you see right here with the U S armed forces between 2008 and 2017, and you see the green is hypothyroidism, the orange is goiters, and then you'll see thyroiditis and other disorders, but they are all increasing. And for sure, these people are not taking extra iodine. Maybe they're taking some of the iodized salt, which is never enough. And then you have thyroid cancers also increasing over the years. So again, I don't think it's because all of these people are suffering from excess iodine. And in fact, it's probably that they're deficient in iodine. So there are people that will recommend we'll just take the kelp from the ocean or eat seafood. And so I was curious. And if you look in Japan, their rates of thyroid cancer is increasing and it's increasing the most in females and you see it's going up. And in fact, all of them are going up, including with males as well as in the total. So if you think that consuming kelp is sufficient or consuming seaweed or um, some of those sea vegetables is enough for you to have your normal levels of iodine, it probably is not. And then in comparison, Japan also did this study against US and Korea. And I'm actually Korean American. So I think this is really important for all the fellow Koreans to see that the thyroid cancer is actually much higher in Korea than it is in America. But this is the total incidence rate of thyroid cancers, including both males and females for every 100,000. This was in 2010. So I'm sure it's higher now. And so you can argue that maybe Japanese people eat a lot more kelp, but I can assure you that in Korea, they eat a lot of seaweed. And it's actually four times higher than it is in America. So I'm sure there's other things other than iodine. But my whole point is, if you are just taking sea kelp or iodized salt and think that is sufficient, I just don't think that's a true statement. So I was in the consulting space and we used to do a lot of work like this. And in 2022, this company, the data bridge market research found that Hashimoto's is expected to go up by three times by 2029. So this was just in 2022. And then within seven years, it will triple. And it's actually all over the world. It's not just the U S but the estimated amount of money that they are going to possibly make is 1.3 billion. So the question really is what is making Hashimoto's or hypothyroid autoimmune thyroid proliferate as much as it is. Maybe it's not just the lack of iodine, which I agree with. I don't think it's just iodine, but I do think the lack of iodine is playing a big role and obviously our diet and our gut function.